going forward in the days you know proceedings we uh, will now have a talk on lean concepts to shape and create modern healthcare spaces and all those questions which were been asked to me during lunch time or something can be asked to him all right so uh, he probably knows it better than i do because he has practiced you know uh, in a hospital also so bhajan uh, we have with us you know prashant naidu uh, head H htsi philips limited prashant is head of the healthcare transformation services and infrastructure advisory for south asia for philips india before joining prashant was executive director of apollo bsr hospitals and bsr healthcare group that is the leading chain of hospitals and diagnostic centers in central india in chatisgarh uh, i have had you know the privilege of working with him in his last uh, organization so i know the organization very well he is an engineer by qualification and has vast experience of 24 years in managing businesses project management and execution of projects and sales and marketing so he is the man actually uh, he knows it all uh, he has worked with global companies which probably differentiates him from the rest of us is like ge healthcare siemens thermax you know so he has seen that he has worked with a hospital in a small city and uh, you know uh, i remember once i called him for a for a talk in tata institute of social sciences in bombay in an academic seminar and the idea was you know to let students understand how they work in smaller towns and uh, trust me whosoever had come from big hospitals of bombay to to that uh, seminar went back rich you know understanding that how a small town can teach you uh, certain things and one of the things prashant i still recollect from that talk of yours was you know we nowadays have this uh, what do you call happy hours right see so many faces lit up ha huh? but this happy hours in healthcare was you know happy hours what they used to do was between 10 pm till morning 7 am in in a town of bilai okay uh, many of you probably may not even uh, know where bilai is so they started that that mri and ct scans if you come during that hour will be at prashant 50% discount yeah and and dialysis also you know and mind you hinduja started right off after within say about you know one month of that you know talk that you gave prashant they started that because like like you know the gentleman said from hinduja only that you know the air conditioning of mri you know has to be on whether you are doing an mri or not doesn't matter equipment has to be you know having that otherwise it won't function and it's a 24 hour service okay so if you do that you are just you know there is a concept called marginal costing in you know finance and economics that probably you know worked and uh, thanks to prashant you know many hospitals after that have started in bombay so uh, prashant without wasting too much time you know uh, it's over to you always a pleasure thank you dr desai sir so uh, it's a it's a difficult uh, session post lunch uh, because i i believe in everybody had enjoyed the lunch and it is a difficult task to have a session uh, just after lunch but i'll try to keep it uh, very interesting and short and sweet and uh, before that you know uh, when we were in our booth so uh, most of the the people who are visiting the stalls were uh, not very sure that what philips stsi is all about philips equipments everybody knows about the mr ct cath lab philips lighting everybody is aware of so that i'll just quickly in 5 minutes take you through what we are doing so uh, this division of sts is a global initiative of uh, philips to move from a product to a solution business and we are present globally for last 10 years in india this division is just 2 years young so across philips we are into the healthcare continuum starting from the healthy living where we make our air fryers and air purifiers prevention diagnosis treatment and now philips has also entered into home care so philips has got a focus on health tech we are diluting our stake in lighting but health tech remains the focus for philips and sts which is my part is a part of the connected care and healthcare informatics vertical traditionally as you know uh, when we are building hospitals you have to deal with multiple vendors be it architects you know builders fabricators interior designers 
contractors, so and so forth, maybe 40 to 50 vendors at least you deal with that. So, this division of mine, the STSI, we are playing a role of a system integrator. We can be the single point of contact for all the solution needed for uh, setting up a hospital. So, we did an uh, analysis of uh, you know, what uh, could be the, the pain areas for the customers and where all we can provide them the solutions. In terms of the design intent, we are working on you know, the complete healthcare experience, be it the clinical excellence or the design workflow or the patient experience. So, all three put together can result in the total healthcare experience. So, when we talk about the uh, patient experience, I will take one step forward and talk about people experience here. So, most of the hospitals nowadays are designed with the patient experience, but then going forward, we need to look at not just the patient, we have to look at the comfort of the patient relatives as well, and need to take care of the staff and the doctors who are working in that environment. So, I will call it, you know, it should be people centric, not just patient centric. So, uh, that is one step we need to uh, take towards that. So, as I said, you know, Philips is moving to be a solution provider. And we did an analysis as to what all are the customer pain areas and where we can offer them solutions as Philips and not just try to be into a product selling of city, trying to sell an MR or a CT or a cat lab. So, we realize that the customers need support in the strategic healthcare consulting advisory. They need support in the hospital designing part. They need support in the project management. They need procurement advisory, financing arrangement and operational efficiencies and operational consultancy support. So, all these verticals my division STS is now catering to. So, typically in the strategic advisory, we are into healthcare consulting, project strategy, techno-economic viability study, financial modeling, hospital designing, complete project management, procurement advisory for you know medical equipment and non-medical, financing arrangement through our Philips capital arm and also into the operational consultancy of pre-commissioning support, clinical process improvement, so on and so forth. On the designing part, we are in the BIM uh, uh, platform. We are doing all our designing on the BIM model and we are doing the complete integrated project delivery. So, right from the strategic advisory to the start of the hospitals, we can do the hand holding for the customers. Typically in the design program, the backbone is the integrated values, goals, facts and the needs of the client organization. So, we look, have to look into the human factors which are functional, social, physical, psychological, environmental factors, cultural factors, technological factors with the core being the compliance and the safety. I will give an example, we are doing couple of hospital projects in Bangladesh and in Bangladesh with one patient at least 15 to 20 relatives come. So, unless until you are aware of those kind of a cultural uh, background, your patient waiting areas and all other areas would be choked if you do not have that into the consideration. So, we need to be aligned to whatever uh, geographies you are designing for and what are their values. In fact, you know one of the instances Dr. Desai was sharing in the Saibi hospital where you know the toilet positioning I think you know went uh, you know uh, the, uh, the position of the or the inclination of the toilet was somewhere wrong and the client does not like that. So, these are the small things we need to take care of and the, understand the customer uh, psychology. So, typically uh, any hospital is a, is a living uh, uh, body wherein you know it is looking at the life space and the building factors and we need to create a safe, sustainable and lively uh, healthcare experience overall. So, uh, the design intent need to be very, very clear in terms of the convenience first, the engaging the whole family because nobody cares about the patient relatives and he is the poor child who is actually going to pay the bill and he is the most, you know, uh, neglected soul in the hospital premises. So, we need to engage the whole family, it should be a one stop shop, it should be there has to be non-hospital feel. I think that is one of the very, very core and most of the hospitals to now design that with that kind of thing in mind and it should be able to accommodate the variety of people and it should also bring value to the people. So, typically uh, the early informed design decision would improve the cost quality and the time parameters right from the site and surrounding analysis, stack planning and mass modeling, energy modeling, the simulation and the analysis of it, the green and sustainable design would result in the final massing. So, all these things need to be taken into the consideration and BIM modeling is something which can be very well technology can be leveraged to uh, work on this BIM modeling which is a 3D model or a virtual representation of the real physical building and if you work on the BIM uh, platform, you can actually save a lot of cost uh, during the project. So, typically a BIM modeling would throw up all the automated flash detection reports 
so you can save on the time and the cost overruns. The intent being here, so all these benefits would result in you know a single point responsibility, transparency, better controls, and savings. So with your blessings, we've been doing more than 1,500 plus beds in last one and a half years of our existence. And uh, uh, incidentally, I have my colleague uh, Renu, who is the head of design for STS. And uh, initially, you know, she was not planning to come here, but since she is here. So I would now try to pass on the baton of uh, the lean design to her and she'll take you through the lean design. Uh, Renu, please. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Prashant, for giving me an opportunity to talk about uh, lean design. Uh, being an architect, I think most of us, we try and design beautiful buildings, but what we don't understand if the caregivers are not satisfied the kind of, with the kind of processes which are being built in, then it's of no use because you are any which way uh, losing on your resources, you're wasting on your resources. So just to take you through, I think uh, I'll just take you what all contents we are going to present. It's about the background, uh, why lean design, uh, why it's very, very important. Uh, because if I may use, it's not about just lean design, it's about the lean management and lean thinking. Because many a times we think of uh, building beautiful hospitals with very uh, technologically advanced uh, things, but what we don't understand is the processes are not built right. We are not going to build spaces uh, nicely. Uh, we are going to introduce you with the lean design, uh, what are the goal of it, the framework to achieve the lean design, and how do you do it? What all the factors which, with which you can achieve lean design is what, how, who, and when. Uh, then obviously we'll show you some of the examples, live examples which we uh, did. Uh, so many a times what we do is uh, historically I think healthcare organizations have been building beautiful new hospitals uh, which are technologically very well advanced with latest style and very often what happens is the shortfall comes where the processes are not in place. So the patient may be sitting in a very gorgeous environment with uh, nice ambience around it, uh, very lively uh, spaces, there's a flat screen TV, but end of the day, he or she is waiting in the uh, lounge. So what exactly is the problem? It's with the appointment, you're coming with an appointment, but where we are going wrong? A nurse may be very well equipped with the latest technology, but if the spaces are not built to take care of all those uh, things, then maybe she can go wrong. If it's not built around safety, if it's not built around the spaces, then everything and anything can go wrong. So what are the challenges? So challenges are with the healthcare administrators who wants to bring in the best of the services for the patients, but they are unable to do it. So why is it so? So the ultimate challenge for both healthcare professionals and design team is not to build bigger, better, technological, just technologically advanced hospitals, but they have to bring in some processes into place. So just to bring you back to the introduction, I think most of us know that this lean thinking, actually it has come from Japanese manufacturing, in particular from Toyota production system. From there, this particular word has come out, this lean management or lean thinking. So what are exactly we are talking about in terms of lean thinking? Simply put, lean means less. So it could be uh, just to stop the wasted of could be time, could be uh, your money, your supplies, and even the goodwill. So this what we are talking about is not just about the building, but what we are talking about is a management strategy. So if the things are put properly in processes, then the spaces can be built around it. So what, are, what is the goal of building a lean uh, hospital? The goal is very, very simple. It's to redesign the processes and reduce waste. So the design of the physical space is done with the intent to support the improved flows of work but it's very different from the traditional model. What we used to do earlier is to build physical spaces and then we used to create work around it. But this is something which we need to now really rethink about whether the physical spaces are to be made first and then the processes are to be dealt with 
or whether we wanted to sit across the table, understand the requirement, understand the needs, do the simulation, and then think about designing a particular space. So what exactly built to make this framework? So it's about guiding principle that must be kept at the forefront through all decisions. So in the previous slide, what we have talked about is why lean building or lean design is very, very important. Here we, we are going to build upon a framework that by what you can build a new and a lean design buildings is by what, how, when, and applying the lean facility design properly. So we should anticipate metrics of improvement. So there are many times we have dealt with hospitals, their operating teams must be sitting here who are running hospitals. But I think if the processes are not right, even if you're building large uh, waiting spaces, still people are using and wasting their time sitting out there. So in advance of using this approach to facility design coordination, there are a few considerations required to make the most of the staff and design team efforts worthwhile. So what exactly are we going to build is prioritization of the hotspots and concerns by administration and design team. Because many a times we don't uh, really look into the concerns or even if we have looked at, we don't really record them. So while designing a new hospital, the earlier experiences are not captured. So what we have to exactly do is to analyze where we are going wrong and then definitely not, ju not just keeping it here because many a times people changes, the administration changes. So what you have to do is you have to actually pen down and record the, those uh, shortfalls. And while you're designing the new spaces or so th there's some refurbishment which is happening, you have to consider all those criteria where the shortfalls were to design a better spaces. So clear assignment of lean leadership and reporting responsibility is very, very important. So what to analyze? So we have already learned few things about lean building. So we have to analyze the current state processes, the future state processes, and the future testing and layout designs. So the current state processes is basically what? It's about defining the work, reviewing the guiding principles, ensuring the right players are engaged. This is very important because many a times the right players are not brought on board at the very beginning. And then what happens, you design a space, it's very nicely designed, but end of the day, the end users when they come, they see the shortfalls. So there we have to have uh, very consciously decide who all should be the uh, right people at the right time, you have to bring them on board. So the observation data collation is very, very important. You have to do the analytic uh, things around it. You have to interview not just your, uh, maybe the end users, but your patients, the users of the space, the staff. You have to take guidance from each and everybody and you have to record it. So you have to analyze the current processes using value stream mapping and spaghetti diagrams. Identification of opportunities for improvement and source of waste is very, very critical. So coming to the future state process, so once we have recorded most of the things from what is happening in the current state, it's very important like you evaluate what you have come out of it. Sorry. So you have to evaluate, you have to brainstorm in new ways, how to work around it, how you have to deliver better care, and what should be the focus, how you can innovate various things out of it, whether it has to be a patient-centric or people-centric approach. Because many a times, as Prashant rightly said, most of the spaces the hospitals are designed or are designed keeping in mind the patient. And many a hospital, to be very honest, used to be designed considering the star doctor's requirements. Uh, so we were not focusing on who all are the end users, what all exactly are we required. It was actually a people-centric, uh, it has to be a people-centric approach. So development and analysis of options for future state processes using bubble or the adjacencies diagrams is very, very important. We have to value stream the mapping. Establishment of implementation plans for process improvement needed to move for current state to future state. Coming to the third stage of analysis, what is future testing and layout design? We have to then once, I think the two stages are crossed, what we used to do in the current with the data collation, what we are going to build through the future state, what we are supposed to do now is the testing because you have all the information in hand, now you need to test on it. So how can you do that? 
So it's about overviewing of the footprint you have already drawn out of the conclusion what we have considered. Testing the future state processes of laying using 2D gaming methods or doing mockups. Because most of the time what we, the mistake what we do is that we are in very much hurry to start the construction activities at site. But what most of us don't understand, if you are doing things rightly on paper, you have to spend more time designing it, designing proper spaces than to go on to the next stage of construction. Because most of the time what happens is uh, we all are in a hurry that the land is already there, I've got the approvals, let's start it. And meanwhile, we can keep deliberating on the options, on the floor plans and things like that. But what happens in that whole uh, system, we lag somewhere and we don't really look uh, into the right processes and we are in a hurry to uh, give our GFCs uh, onto the contractor because somebody is sitting at site, they are forcing you to deliver the drawings. So that particular process, which is very, very important for a lean design, it goes. Uh, so what, what we have to do is to evaluate the layouts option against criteria for future state. Are we ready? So everybody has to question themselves. Are we ready for that? Refinement of layouts in future state flows based upon above analysis. Coming to the next stage, how you can do it. So what we have already covered, then how you're going to do it. So it's about the three Ps. So what are these three Ps? Three Ps is nothing but production, preparation, and process. So this is how we, in Philips, we call it as co-create workshop. It's basically a workshop where you tend to get all your stakeholders on board and not just, uh, I'll come to the later slides where we'll talk about who all are the right prospective candidates who should be brought in. I think using lean tools and methods to design out waste from the start, brainstorming alternative ways to meet customer needs using different processes and flows. Uh, rapidly creates and test potential designs is very, very important. The goal is to optimize flow and value to the customer. The team focuses on the processes and space related to one service line or department and is comprised of cross-functional members essential to the work. So how, uh, what is very, very important here again is the mindset, the right mindset. Many a times the right mindset, the kind of people participating in the activities are not of the right mindset. So you have a green glass, glasses, and you will, everything for you is, looks green. So we have to differentiate, we have to think out of the box. And then the challenges you have to accept is when this co-create workshop is happening, you have to come out with ideas. So it cannot be a fixed ideas. And the first and the foremost thing is that we don't have to think negatively, that we have already tried this, this is tried and tested, let's use it. No, many a times I think even, uh, sometimes your gut feels also says the right thing. So, so sometimes the basic principles we generally uh, don't use. So I think going back to the old philosophy of thinking, thinking through innovations, some out of the box uh, things needs to be, uh, one has to challenge herself or himself and then come out of uh, a better mindset. So let's not have cannot, will not, and we have tried this before kind of a methodology while doing a co-create workshop, which is very, very important. To nourish new creative out of the box thinking, all stakeholders must be invited to open up for change and bring new and innovative inputs by feeling valued to their contribution for the processes and the end result. So we have to think differently. So the right tools is the right mindset. So the various four phases which actually talks about uh, these three P or the co-create workshop is one, to discover. So what exactly are the insights of which you, what you have gone through? You have to explore the existing facility. You have to talk about new things. You have to think through. Second is to frame. It's, it's about framework around the discovery, what you have done. So define the opportunity areas or challenges based on the as a situation from the discover phase. Using trends and foresight, define a better future. Third stage is to ideate. So what you have discovered, what you have framed out of it, you have to now ideate upon it. So you have to find out solution. There has to be new ideas around it. And then finally, you have to build. So the whole four, four processes is very, very important. If leaving one process in the middle will not give you the output, the desired output.
So by uh, we have learned what, how, and now who. So who are the people who should actually participate uh, for the lean design? So it's about the total staff and the design team representative. So first to come, not to forget, the promoter, the investor, the CEO, CFOs, and CEO, the medical director, the HODs or the key star doctors, the nursing director, the administrators, the operating or the facility department managers, not to forget engineering head is very important, procurement head, finance head, even the, the people who are running the pharmacy knows many things. Many a times your shoots are not designed appropriately. They are the guys who actually guide you where exactly you need the shoots. IT and clinical information, architects, not to forget, obviously they are the one who are going to build everything together. Medical planners, interior designers, patients and family representatives, and staff nurse. So these are the guys who need to be brought to board at the very early stage if you want to have the processes built rightly and then to think about the lean design. As with all lean activities, it is critical to engage the staff who are affected by the improvement and design work. The people who deliver the services are viewed as the resident experts. Therefore, they are the vital in redesigning. The list of the people who do the work should include clinical caregivers as well as support services, as I have mentioned here. You can see in the slide who all should be the participant. So next is when. So when do you want to brought them, or brought all, the, all of them on board? So I should say earlier the better. Because the moment your design is done, you are ready to build. At that stage, if you want to bring in their valuable information, it tends to change. And change again is, again, uh, losing on your resources, money, waste of time. And again, the whole process of lean thinking is, uh, the whole effort goes waste. So the optimal time to conduct the 3P event or the co-create workshop, as we rightly said, is prior to schematic design. The 3P event most often occurs before or during the programming. So therefore, it is very important to be clear on the boundaries related to changing the program. So you can see there is a matrix which shows at what stage you need to bring in people. So these are some of the outcomes from the, uh, the tangible, actually, concepts, I should say, the outcomes. Uh, we have done a simulation wherein, uh, for the sample collection, the total number of uh, stations which were made uh, were, uh, people had to wait for a long time uh, for getting even their sample collection done. So we have done a simulation around that. Rather than uh, using more space, what we have done, we have actually added more number of stations to the same location, considering the total footfall. So by doing that, in the same space, we were able to cater to more number of people and then reduce on the total wait, wait times which they had to do. Again, the outcome of the co-create workshop, how do you do it? So there are many players who are actually participating in it, and their ideas are, in the flip charts, they are being stick. So then what you do, you ideate on that. You think through. It's not that the, it, at the very same day you have to come out with the outcome. So everything has been built. Everything has been visualized. Everything has been thought through. And through the processes, you finally come to the outcome, what exactly needs to be done. Better workflows, very, very important. As you see in this slide, basically the MR rooms are sitting at the top. The nursing station or the preparation area is somewhere in the middle. Then the screening is happening somewhere else. The patient check-in is, check is happening somewhere else. So what you can see is a crisscross of traffic. The flow is not proper. People are moving various directions. They have to stop at various locations and thereby losing on so much of their valuable time. Again, bringing back to the workflow efficiencies, I think the way uh, we have the, the, the processes, if they are in place, there are a lot of things which you can efficiently design, keeping in mind the workflows. And then the outcome is obviously the lean design. So lean design to, again, I, I did, uh, it's not about saving money. 
it's about the processes, right processes in place in time. Some of the flip charts from the workshop which we generally do with our clients. Before coming to the drawing boards, it's actually the ideation, the three days or the four days workshop with all the participants there so that we understand their requirement. The focus is very, very clear that we want to come out of the rightful resources right people, right processes, right kind of ambience, right kind of environment and right kind of physical spaces. Some of the glimpses of the teamwork which we did during the workshop. And this Prashant has already told you what all uh, Philips bring to board. And that's about lean design. It's a welcoming note for you, it seems. So, uh, any questions from? Yeah. This uh, insightful and informative process of design that uh, one one should be following in all the projects actually. Yeah. I'm an architect and we are designing hospitals and uh, this process thing is something that uh, is uh, to be frank is missing yeah. when we are following this design process where uh, you rightly said that deliverables are uh, already uh, due. So I mean uh, did you have to do some additional efforts with the clients to ask for this time? No, I think they are more than happy to do this activity because many a times what happens, the design is already in place. You actually go and present them but many a times there are things which they want, wanted uh, to be told before and nobody has gone, gone to them and asked them for their input. So I think they are very happy to sit across the table and have a two or three days workshop and then give you the clear mindset what exactly are they looking at. I think all the clinical efficiencies only comes with proper processes and proper design spaces. So they're very happy to do that. And I think you know, aligning with their vision and mission is equally important. Exactly. So, so we need to understand, you know, what is the vision and mission for, of the organization, and what is their uh, plans to go ahead. You know, if we are not aligned on that, you know, we end up creating something which is actually because they are not in a position to actually have the perspective of you know what is being created. And one, when, when it comes up, then they'll say, "This is not what I expected out of this hospital." Exactly. So then it's better that we do that discussion upfront. So this actually is a process where you actually steer them through and make them understand what exactly you are going to build. Because as rightly, uh, Prashant said rightly, many a times they don't have that kind of a vision to understand what exactly it's going to look like. So these days I think the technology, the BIM model and everything is very, very easy, but that comes a little later. Yeah. Initially you have to understand what exactly they are looking at. Yeah, the simulation part comes much later. Much later. And much the, later. the core process that you just explained is something that… Exactly. Must be done. But I think Thanks. what are other thing that happens, the advantage of that, you know, co-creation is that you educate the client. Yes. Yes. You know, so uh, from a background, see, I am a doctor. So when these guys talk, initially I never used to understand why they are saying what they are saying, right? So once you get educated, you tend to think, you know, much better. Yeah. And you challenge some ideas also. During the discussion, you challenge some ideas, you know, this is what you thought about, what, this is what our perception on this is, and these are the various options, and then you deliberate on that. So I think, you know, that gives a very uh, healthy uh, discussion because, you know, otherwise the same discussion will happen when the building is getting ready. That's true. That's true. It is going to happen. But yeah. when it happens is the part. Well, thank you so much. Any other question? So I'll call upon my senior, you know, uh, a colleague from my organization who is uh, also, you know, heads the design at mm -hmm. our uh, firm and does pretty much the same thing, you know, that we do. So, n architect Nandini Bazaz, if you could.